Hello, my name is Rhonda Bender and I provide content for miniature painters over at birdwithbrush.com. Uh, today I'd like to share with you an unboxing of the various swag boxes associated with Reaper Virtual Expo. Um, I'm going to have some chapter headings down in the description box, so if you don't know what Reaper Virtual Expo is or you just want to jump to see the contents of a particular box, you can uh, hit the chapters and just get the content you want. Okay, now let's let's get on with it. So one of the options you can buy is the Mega Box, which includes all three of the um, swag boxes plus uh, an additional item. So I'm going to start. At, I I have the Mega Box, so I'm going to start from that point of view. But I'll divide each of the smaller boxes up into their own section. So the special item you get with the Mega Box is this brush holder. Uh, so it's a plastic brush holder and it's got a tiered system that you put your brushes on. I'm going to assemble this and include a photo or brief video at the end of the video. So um, I'll also put a chapter link in for assembled or demonstrated items at the end of the video. Another feature of buying the Mega Box is that you're going to be able to take advantage of uh, Reaper's gen generous uh, gift with purchase. So for every X amount of money that you spend, you get um, to pick out a miniature and you also, for an order, you get the miniature of the month. And occasionally you will get a sample paint included in, in your order, not, not just the Mega Boxes or the bundles, but um, just with any order. And a sample paint is a color that they're testing or a color that there was a mistake when they were making it, so they bottle it up and share it with people for free. So the first box I'm going to be unboxing is the Expo box. So I'm going to have this, uh, because it doesn't fit that well under my document camera, I'm going to have this off to the side and then put the items up here on the desk. Now I did um, open all of these boxes when I received them, um, they had they were shipped during the cold snap, so I wanted to double check that all the paints were okay before I did this video, but I haven't really looked at anything else. So uh, it's a virtual convention, but you get an actual badge, so that's kind of nice. Um, and, and I'm not sure if you can read it here. This is where, if you were live, you would write your name in here, but it says in very light print, my hacker alias is. And that is the date of the event. So if you're watching this prior to then, you can still get involved. The next item is this handy class notebook. If you're taking any of the online classes, you can take notes in this or just use it for whatever you want. And you get a pocket. Oh, looks like we've got some stickers in our pocket. So that these are the factions that the various min miniatures uh, come from and that you can choose to support during the event. So there's the Mercury Flyers, Arcos, Cyberists, and the Rube Tarky. And I mean, notebook is a notebook, but there you are. Okay, you get a cyberpunk themed Reaper Virtual Rinse Cup. So the Expo box comes with this set of three plasma colors. Uh, I've painted swatches of these. I'll include a photo or video of the uh, swatch pictures at the end of this, and there'll be links in the description. In case you don't have something to write in your notebook with, now you have a Reaper Virtual Expo pen. I actually really like these pens. I have several of these from previous Reaper events, and they're the main ballpoint pen that I use. Now on to the miniatures. So these are Bones USA, which is a new plastic formulation that uh, Reaper's been experimenting with. Let's see if we can get a little closer. Uh, and it's a bit of a stiffer plastic, so it holds detail well, but it's not quite as sturdy as the original Bones formula in terms of you can't, you know, 
bend the miniatures back and forth. This is a metal miniature. Um, so this is the little um, mascot for the event. So if you can just kind of see him there and then there's a little tabs to attach the screens on his base. And this is a metal miniature. The next miniature is another uh, Bones USA from the Viceroy faction. But uh, I've seen someone painted him up already. Unfortunately, I don't remember their name. And they painted him as a fantasy figure. So he's a pretty flexible figure. You can paint him how you want. That guy, the first one's a little more techy. Oh, it looks like I actually lost some of my screens. I thought he had more screens. So um, the glue at the bottom of my Grim wasn't uh, 100%. So he actually has two sets of screens. And you can see they're small tabs that attach to uh, little sections of the base. Well, actually, I suspect that's for the larger set. But, um, and then the smaller ones go on too. Or actually, I think they go on top of these. Anyway, um, you all are probably better at assembling miniatures than I am, so I'm sure you'll figure it out, no problem. Another Bones USA, the Viceroy Assassin Genesis. Uh, this is a two-part miniature, so she's like a normal humanoid height, but her legs are stuck under the um, <clears throat> base. There are pictures of all the miniatures uh, complete up on the or up on the Reaper website, and this is the Rutaki Rug Turkey or Hound. So he comes in two pieces. Um, I have a loose one of these, and they fit together really well. You can see the miniatures each come with the base of the appropriate size as well. And it looks like I'm at the end of the uh, expo box. So let's go on to the next box. The next box is the punk box. So again, I'm gonna put this off to the side and pull the, the contents up. First up, we have some luminous goggles, and if you've been watching any of the Reaper streaming shows, I'm sure you've seen people wearing these already. Um, I'll save them and maybe demonstrate them in the demo video at the end. An alternative uh, rinse cup to the other one, and this is also themed to Reaper Virtual Expo, and this is the symbol of all of the factions. Patches. So these have uh, Velcro on the back. So this is RVE 2021. This is the first year, so this is a pretty neat little keepsake. And there's Grim again, his screens. I think you can put these on like cloth bags or um, baseball caps, stuff like that. Next up, we have some paints. So this is the cyber metal set. All of the paints in here are metallics. Um, and I'm gonna swatch these out, uh, probably in a separate video, but I'll um, try to include links to um, swatch scans on my website. So you get various colors of colored metallic. I've heard these are very pretty. And this is the Cyber Gangs color set. So these are standard matte paints themed to the um, factions, but I'm sure you can paint whatever you want with these. And again, I'm going to swatch them and put them up for you to see the exact colors. Um, there's a gift certificate that unlike the last unboxing, I will not be showing on screen. Sorry. Uh, this is a metal miniature, 75 millimeter Scarlet the Cyberist. Um, if you've watched um, Michael Proctor's show, Crow by Crow, on Tuesdays, he had her up last week. So that video is available on Twitch and coming soon to YouTube. She looks like a great miniature, and it's nice to paint something larger now and then, especially as you get older and your eyes aren't as great like myself. Let's see. Here's another Bones USA figure. This is a member of the Arcos faction. She looks pretty cool. Very nice detail. This is another Bones USA, Rook Turkey Smuggler. So he's got a container there and a gun. And with a little bit of conversion, 
<clears throat> you can set him up for a fantasy campaign, no problem. Okay. This one is also Bones USA, Devo Rank, Cyberist. This would be a little harder to convert to uh, fantasy use, but very cool figure. And that was the character on the front of the box. Art. And then one more Bones USA, the Mercury Flyer Asanis. And she's a pretty cool figure. And again, if you cut the gun out of her hand. Well, I mean, it's up to you how techy you feel something is, whether, whether you think it would fit in a fantasy campaign or not. But there are a lot of creative people out there doing a lot of creative things. And that looks like the end of the punk box. So now we'll go for the big box, the hobby box. So this is the hobby box, which is so big, it barely even fits under my camera view. You can see it's got Grimm on it, and further down it says hobby box. Put this off to the side. So there's an entire plastic case, carry case set of paints. So this is uh, 12 all new paints. I've already swatched these. Um, I haven't put the video up on YouTube. I'm not sure it's still available on my um, Twitch channel, but uh, I've got scans and I'll share links to that in the description. Oh. So you open the tabs, you come in here, and this is how, so the, there's room for more paint if you buy some of the other sets and you want to store your paints in here, and there's room for a few miniatures as well. And the top is also padded. I mean, if I put miniatures here, I might add a little extra padding, if they were painted, I mean. So next up, there's another gift certificate in that box for $25 that I'm not going to show on screen. This is a little quick palette you can use. Um, so if you uh, like to travel to a friend's house or the hobby store and you don't want to bring all your stuff, or you just want to be able to paint a little bit at lunch, you just put paints out here and then wipe it down after you use it and use it again. This box also includes a rinse cup, the official rinser brush cup, cleaning utility pod. Friends don't let friends drink paint water. The ever popular pokey tool, if you have uh, drop bottle paints, this isn't a paint, it's a bottle of water so it never clogs, but um, that's the principle of it. You can poke this down in the dropper and open it up and your paint clogs. Or sometimes there's like a little plastic thing that um, goes back and forth over the dropper tip. If you don't have um, one of these and you don't want to buy this box, you can do the same thing with a paper clip or a tea pen. got the Bones USA Rook Arcos Jumper. He's like an archaeologist type figure. Very fun. I like that. So this is a hobby holder from Game Envy, which is pretty neat. And I definitely recommend um, putting your miniatures on some kind of handle when you paint them. Uh, and this one, I'll, I'll uh, add this to the assembled items section of the video at the end. But this one has a brace you can put your hand against so when you can try to hold steady or when printing detail. So that's a really nice feature. I have a handle kind of similar to that and I like that feature a lot. This is also pretty cool. If you've struggled taking pictures of your miniatures, this is something that uh, you might want to try. So this is um, a fold up light box and it has uh, a couple of backgrounds, I believe black and white are included. And I think there's even a light bar is why it's referring to the micro USB. But again, I'll put this in the assembled section at the end. And here's another item for the assembled section at the end. This is a tiered, I think they're calling them the Reaper bleachers. So it's a tiered plastic case or plastic shelving system. Uh, it's intended for paint. So you can see that each of the shelves attached there. There's two of these. It's intended for paint, but I've seen people online assembling the shelves uh, in the opposite orientation to display miniatures. So that's a nice way if you need some extra space on your shelf where you store your miniatures, that's a nice way to have more of them out at a time or prep them for a game. And it looks like that's the end of the box. 
So I'm gonna, um, well, from your point of view, the, the video is going to pause briefly while I assemble things and do paint swatches and all that kind of fun stuff. And I'll come back to you with more information. Hello, I'm back again with some of the items that required assembly so you can see what they look like. This is the um, Looper paintbrush holder. So I, I didn't want to glue mine yet because I want to take the time to get some of the mold lines and more of the sprue off. You can paint this. This is, I think this is Bones USA plastic or something like it. Um, so you could paint this no problem. But I just wanted you to kind of see it in action. It can even accept some of these larger paintbrushes and then the standard size that we use more often in miniature painting has a number of slots you can set that up in whatever orientation you'd like oops well maybe that one's more decorative but i think that's the real slot right there um even if you don't get one of these i would recommend storing your brushes while they're wet horizontally so after they're dried um it's fine to put them in a cup like this uh, but don't, never store them point down and if you can while they're wet store them horizontally so that the water doesn't um, seep up into the trail but that's a side point I'll do a brush on a, a video on um, brush maintenance someday the second item I wanted to show you on um, this camera view is this nifty brush holder so this is the hobby holder from game MV um, and there's some instructions on the side and they've done a very clever thing here where this part is bottle cap size. So you can collect bottle caps of soda bottles and have a number of miniatures in progress at a time and just, um, oh, I think that is blue tack actually, that's interesting. Because what I was gonna tell you is you have two ways to attach the miniature and then this is the handle you can use to kind of brace your hand against while painting. Um, so I have this miniature attached with poster tack because it's got, um, like a crevice in the bottom, this works well with a lot of bases. For flat bottom base miniatures, like a lot of the bones, I like to use this double-sided tape, which is from 3M. Um, you should be able to find this a lot of different places. I bought it in the drugstore, I've seen it in the hardware store, certainly it's at big box stores. Um, and this is strong stuff. I use this on metal miniatures too. And it'll really hold them on there well, but then it pops off pretty easily. Uh, sometimes you need to use like a flat blade sculpting tool or something. So this is a bit of a larger miniature. This is a, intended to fit up to 56 millimeter size miniatures. I don't know if they have bigger handles. This pops off if you don't like the handle. Um, and I very much recommend painting with some kind of painting handle. It doesn't have to be um, something fancy that you buy, but um, it's, it's much easier to brace your hands and you're not touching the miniature, which helps the paint stay on more. So that's the um, miniature handle that comes in the I'll say the hobby box and uh, I'm gonna change to the other camera view to show you the next item the next item I'd like to show you is the paint shelf and I have assembled this as a paint shelf because I needed one uh, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with this it's very sturdy uh, it's nice the, the shelves height is pretty high so the paints aren't very likely to fall out of there um, you can assemble it with the shelves at the other orientation, so you could use it as a miniature display tiered shelving system instead. Uh, it assembles via screws and nuts that come with the shelf set, and it has a little screwdriver it comes with even, so you don't need anything other than what's in the set to assemble it. I did need an additional person to help me briefly just holding um, the one end in while I got the initial screws in and then once I had one side done I, I just flipped it over and it was easy to screw in the other side and I'm not very handy so if I say it's easy it's not too bad the next item I want to show you is the photo cube and it comes in this handy carrying bag or storage bag um, as you can see it's it's really quite flat won't take up a lot of space in your house. I have a permanent uh, photo cube set up because painting miniatures is kind of my job, so I have to take pictures of them for um, 
my clients, like Reaper. So it's got some instruction sheet, it includes the contents, um, and I hadn't actually done this yet, so I guess we'll see if I can do it smoothly enough first shot out or if I have to uh, reset my video. So it comes with two uh, backdrops, a black and a white. This is the one kind of thing that disappointed me about this. My preferred backdrop for taking pictures of miniatures to have the least problems is gray. Um, and this is just a uh, kid's fun foam or something like that they call it. Uh, you may be able to find this at the craft store. The gray is actually fairly difficult to find, but a light blue or a light tan, something that's kind of a medium color rather than the extreme of black or white, you may find easier to take pictures of because your camera kind of assumes that this is about the background level of... Um, the, the level of lighting in the background, if cameras are set to assume something kind of like that. So then this... So this is the actual light cube. And the first instruction is unfold the studio, pulling from the edge. Okay, so rather than making you watch me struggle through getting all of it together, I mean, it's not that challenging. It was just um, not looking that attractive on camera. Uh, so it's got a little snap system. Then there's three tabs. So you just put the, the middle tab with the hole in the middle and then put the other two tabs together that on both sides and it's assembled. Then this is a light strap strip here. Uh, it comes with a uh, USB cord so you can attach that to power. And then you can put the backdrop inside. You kind of want to make it like a sweep so that you don't have a fold in the background and you should be ready to go to take pictures. Now what I would do is experiment with the lighting. You could probably put two strong desk lamps to either side of this or shop lamps, something like that. Maybe even one on top. Uh, and then experiment with the LED system as well. And even with a fairly recent generation phone camera, you should be able to get decent photos, but the light is the thing that you're gonna have to play around with the most to get good photos. But having using something like this where you have that plain back background, really helps your camera focus on the miniature rather than a bunch of stuff that you don't care about for your picture. I almost forgot the cyber goggles. So for full effect, and I have no idea what this looks like because I just took off my glasses. So um, it comes with the batteries you need. I did have to actually uh, fix the lead on one of my things. But so then there are two buttons on the side because I think you can control each side individually. It does have um, blinking modes. And so you can make each of the sides different colors as well. Okay, now I can't get it to blink. First I didn't want it to blink, and now I can't get it to blink. But it will, you, you, know, you just mess with these buttons, and ooh, I like this uh, teal and magenta thing going on here. Uh, so you can have some fun with this. Very uh, theme appropriate. So how do you get all or any of this stuff if you want it? Uh, you can currently order the mega box or any of the three individual boxes at reapermini.com. I'll put links down below. Um, but perhaps you only want some of these items. You might want the paint set or you know some of the miniatures. I believe the miniatures are going to go on sale on a permanent basis. I'm not 100% sure. There may be a few of them like Grimm or the uh, 75 millimeter metal one. There may be some that are um, exclusive to the convention, but I'm, I suspect that a number of them will go on sale individually at some point in the future. Typically, uh, after Reaper sells the boxes for a while, they will sell the contents of the boxes. So they'll sell like this set of paint and the other paint sets, and if they have leftover badges, they'll sell the leftover badges. If they have leftover cups, they'll sell the leftover cups. Uh, the thing to keep in mind is that all of these kinds of items, the cups, the notebooks, the um, bleacher stands, the, um, the cube, the photo cube, all of that stuff is made somewhere other than Reaper. So they have the amount that they have. So what's going to go up on sale is what's left after they fulfill the demand for full boxes and the, the mega box set. So there's, there's not really a way to guarantee getting those things. 
but if you'd like to have your first shot at them, I mean, you're more likely, they probably made a lot more of the paint and the miniatures because they make those in-house. So they could um, overstock a little on those more easily. Uh, I would um, check the website, reapermini.com regularly, or you could sign up to Reaper's uh, socials, like their Facebook group page or, or Twitter or something like that. And they usually announce when things like that become available there. Um, if you follow them on Twitch, they have several shows. They're most likely to announce the um, selling of individual supplies, I would think, on their Reaper Live show, which airs Thursdays at, I think, 6 p.m. Central Time. Reaper's on Central Time, so they list everything by that time zone. So that's how to get the stuff if you want any of the things that you've seen here today. So if you aren't already familiar with it, you might be wondering, what is Reaper Virtual Expo? Uh, and it's taking place from um, March 5th to March 7th. You can go to reapervirtual.com and I'll put links down below. Uh, it's an online virtual convention that you can attend. So events include uh, games that you can sign up for to play. Um, there's gonna be a lot of Twitch stream content that will include uh, two role-playing games at least. I think there may be three. Uh, I know for sure there's one on Friday night that's more fantasy themed, although I think we're going to work in the Reaper Virtual Expo theme a little bit somehow. I'll be playing in that game with some of the other Reaper artists. And then Saturday, some of the uh, Reaper staff members will be playing in a, in a more cyberpunk themed game. And that should be, uh, both of those games are going to have like great scenery and mini painted miniatures and all kinds of cool things to look at, as well as enjoying our antics. There's panels. There'll be a panel uh, with the sculptors on Friday and a panel with the painters on Saturday. All of this should be on the calendar at the reapervirtual.com site. Um, if you're interested in painting miniatures or learning more about painting miniatures, there are classes, and I'm going to tell you about mine here in a minute. Uh, but there's a lot of different classes. There's a classes tab at reapervirtual.com. They're all free. Everything involved with Reaper, Reaper Virtual is, Expo is free other than if you want to buy the swag boxes that I showed you earlier in the video. Uh, but you do need to register to sign up for the classes because they're being conducted over Zoom. So you need to register so that you can get sent the links. If you don't have the exact materials that the instructor is using, just try to find something approximate so you can paint along if it's a paint along class. Some of them are gonna be demonstrations, some of them are gonna be paint along. Um, one of mine is a paint along and if you go to the class section um, I've done this and several other people have done this as well. There's a handout associated with the class and mine lists the materials I'll be using and suggestions for alternatives. So um, the, the paint along class that I'll be teaching is to paint scales. So we're going to paint these smaller type scales and then these larger belly scales. This is the um, color scheme I'll be using. I'll be using a different figure that's a little more open. So it's one of these Sanctum but a different pose. I unfortunately did not bring one with me to make the video. And then this is, I was initially experimented with a different color scheme. This used a couple more paints, so I didn't feel it was as good for the class. But the, you'll be able to take the principles that we use in the class and use it with different colors. So that's why I thought I'd show both of those. The other class I'll be teaching is on additives and mediums. So if you've ever, uh, if you have some of these or you've seen these products in the Reaper calendar or you've seen similar products from Viejo or at the art store or the craft store from companies like Golden or Liquitex, and you've wondered exactly what these are and how they might help you in your painting, that is what I aim to show you in this class. So if you have some of these, you can uh, grab a couple bottle of paints and play along with me in the class, but it's really meant as more of a demonstration class and for you to get an idea of what products you might like to buy, if any. Um, in addition, and I'm hoping there's time for this at least, in addition to the, the mediums and additives, I'm also hoping to talk about some uh, products like texture pastes. And so these are actually mediums and, and products that you could use. Let me try turning off light and see if that helps. Products that you can use uh, in miniature preparation. So this is something that I prepared for the class. Some of these take a long time to dry. So I'm going to show the, the products fresh from the bottle in the class, but I also wanted to have dried samples. And then these are texture pastes. Uh, some of these I have are from Viejo, some are from the art store people like Golden. Um, and these are things you can use as basing materials. Some of these you can kind of use for 
that feeling and sculpting. So there's a lot of different things we can do with our hobby, with various um, mediums and texture paste and other products you can get for the art store. And I'd like to try to help you um, be less mystified about what these products are and how you might be able to use them. So um, that class is called Additives, Mediums, and Texture Paste. So my and the other class that I'll be teaching with, this, with the Snake Men is Painting Scales. So I, whether you come to my class or someone else's or just joining the game or watching Twitch streams, I hope that I'll see you at Reaper Virtual Expo.